everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Corin, also known as the Kitten Choreographer, and I am a teen with a passion for animal rescue and, in particular, kitten rescue. Sorry if you hear background noise, Peter decided it was a perfect time to play with a loud toy. So thanks, Peter. Anyways, today's video is all about the necessary supplies for foster kittens. You see all these videos for supplies for foster kittens and so many of them are supplies that aren't really necessary. Today I'm here to show you things that you actually need and not things that you don't necessarily need that are just helpful. I'm going to show you things that you should buy and that you need to buy and stuff you can't go without. I have none of the frivolous extra stuff that make your life easier, such as bottle warmers or incubators. Those can be great and are great for fostering, but you don't need them to start out. So I guess this is the beginner's guide to fostering bottle babies. There will be a part two to this video where I talk about the supplies you need for weaned kittens and for moms with babies, but in today's video we're specifically talking about bottle babies because they need a little bit different supplies. They don't need kibble, they need formula, you know? So I have my list here. I have a couple honorable mentions, but then I have a bunch of stuff that you actually need. I didn't put obvious things that you probably already have in your home, such as a fridge to put opened formula in if that type of formula requires being refrigerated, or, you know, a sink to bathe your kittens in if they have poop explosions or fleas. And I didn't put things that your rescue will probably give you, such as medications, because I definitely don't recommend starting out fostering independently because then you're going to have to pay so much money, you know, vet care and stuff. So I'm not talking about dewormer, which your rescue will probably give you, or defleeing, you know the medicine stuff. I'm just talking about the supplies that in my experience rescues or shelters require you to pay for or stuff they expect you to already have at home. So the first thing is one of the most obvious things and that is KMR or kitten milk replacer or kitten formula. This is a type of formula. Right now I'm using KMR. There are lots of different ones and I can maybe do a video on the pros and cons on each of them based on my experience. For a while I used Breeders Edge and I really liked it and I used to use Petlac but I don't necessarily recommend that anymore because the kitten's poops were never good and poops are something you gotta talk about if you're a bottle baby foster parent because a kitten's poop is one of the best ways to know if it's healthy or not. And I can talk all about that in another video. I'm not here to tell you what a kitten's poop should look like in this video but I'm just saying some Breeders Edge makes kittens have good poop and right now I recently got fosters from someone that was already fostering them and she gave them to me and they were already on KMR and I didn't want to switch them and I didn't think they could switch to Breeders Edge because I've heard it doesn't taste as good. I've heard obviously just from what people's experiences are watching the kittens that it doesn't taste as good as KMR. I've been using this. This is an unopened one. I'm using another one right now but I pulled the unopened one here because it was closer when I was getting together the material for this. Tip for filming this, I don't think I'm going to link all the products in the description just because I don't have affiliate links and it's not really worth my time. Peter, stop it! You're being so loud! I'm not a big enough following to have affiliate links and basically I used to but Amazon like stopped putting people with low followings in their affiliate program. So I don't have affiliate links so it's not really worth my time to link stuff in the description. If you have a specific thing you can't find the link for then I can give it to you in the comments but I'm not going to just put them there when people probably aren't going to use them. But I do definitely recommend to buy KMR from Chewy instead of Amazon as of the time I'm filming this and probably the next little bit because on Chewy a thing of 12 ounce KMR is $15 versus on Amazon it's $25. I think there's a little bit of a shortage there so I definitely recommend going and purchasing it from Chewy instead of Amazon. Anyway, formula. Just a thought if you're wondering how to bottle feed babies, I do have a relatively old video on how to feed bottle babies that I'll link in the description below. I haven't watched it in a while so not sure if the information is entirely correct but it's a good starting point for how to bottle feed babies. So the next thing is another obvious thing and these are bottles or syringes. I have just an empty bottle with a miracle nipple which does not come with the bottles. Nipples come, a different nipple comes with the bottle but you have to cut it yourself and everything so the next thing that I'm gonna say like this I consider a necessity and I'll talk about this in a little bit even though can be used without it but I just I could not foster without these. I need them so much and basically for bottle babies if you have tricky eaters or kittens under two weeks old I personally recommend syringes because you can slowly push the formula into the kitten's mouth and get them to swallow even though they're not necessarily latched which is basically where they're like actively suckling and you don't need to squeeze the syringe or like push down the syringe to make them drink. My bottles are good for I'd say two kittens two weeks and up that are great eaters two weeks to like four and a half weeks because that's kind of when you start weaning at four and a half to five weeks. I have just an empty bottle. I prefer the pet AG bottles. I've tried one other but these you don't want to squeeze bottles but you can like squeeze it slightly so just a little drop goes onto the kitten's tongue so that they can taste it and just know its formula so they can start latching and suckling and these bottles are a little easier
easier to just do the little drop thing with than um, some other bottles I've tried. So I like these. You can buy them. Oh, most of this stuff you can buy on Amazon if you're in the U.S. I know in Canada it's unfortunately a lot harder to buy things. They don't have miracle nipples. They don't have some other things. Sorry if you're in Canada or in other places. But this is kind of speaking from someone in the U.S. that has access to all of this stuff. But they're definitely necessities. And syringes, these are five milliliter syringes. They're the Lure Lock, Lure Lock and the other one, both Miracle Nipples work on both of them. So you can use five milliliter or 10 milliliter syringes to feed. I have five milliliter ones right now, so that's what I use. That was me playing with a spring. Why do you boys have to be so loud right when I'm filming? Oh, but speaking of all this bottle baby supplies, I actually just got some new foster kittens. They're about two weeks old, three of them, and they're great. I was gonna film an introduction video. I started filming an introduction video and then I just didn't film their other half of it. You know, me getting the kittens and stuff. I just did the introduction and so I didn't think that would be a very good video. But if you would like to see some content with them, I'll definitely try and get ideas. I don't have any personally on how I can do it since I've already done a video on how to bottle feed, but let me know your suggestions on how I can incorporate them into my videos while they're still bottle babies. Because once they're in the kitten room, you'll see them running around, but they're just in my bathroom right now in a tub. So anyways, the third thing is a miracle nipple. Hang on, I brought the little baggie of miracle nipples. These things are pretty expensive. For 10, it's like $50 for these little pieces of rubber or whatever they're made of. And I have only a few of them left in here because I have them on like all four of the caps of bottles that I use. I debated on whether putting this as a necessity or not. I personally could never foster without it and if you have access to these definitely get them. You can buy them in like two packs for $15 which is a lot more reasonable. Technically you can use the nipples that come with the bottles but I just find I've heard that kittens don't latch well to them at all so I definitely definitely recommend getting miracle nipples or at least adding them to your wish list because they're so necessary for me. And in this video I'm telling you what supplies you need if you're planning to to be a foster parent and I know you probably have a budget and a lot of the stuff you're seeing isn't really necessary but these are things foster things that I truly could not foster without them I just some of this stuff is so necessary the next thing I have two options for these are a heat source so this is an electric heating pad I have two of these one of them is with my babies right now and this is the other one that I have this is made for pets you really want to make sure that your heating sources are made for pets and that it also does not have an automatic off switch the other option for heat source I have is a microwavable heating pad. This is a snuggle safe. I really only use these when I'm going to pick up kittens and they're going to be in my car and they need a heat source. I just, I don't like them. They're hard. I feel like they're not comfortable for the kittens to lie on. You have to keep reheating them. Like you can't just have them. You have to like reheat them, which just seems excessive. These you plug in and you only have to worry about the heating pad when they poop on it and you have to change the blankets. My heating pads are definitely a necessity. Like hands down, this is one of the most necessary things on this list because kittens will die without heat because their little bodies can cannot regulate their body temperature until they're a little older and the mom cats lie with them to regulate their body temperature. And they don't have moms so they need the heat from the heating pad for the first few weeks. So the next necessary things are baby blankets. For bottle babies, you're gonna need blankets. I'll talk about this later, but you need a tub for bottle babies and you can't just lie them on plastic. So what I do is if I don't have this heating pad cover on because there's only one of them that comes with the blanket and they need to be washed, I have these blankets. They're like swaddling blankets that you can put over top of it to cover it up because they can't be exposed to just the bare heating pad. And these you can also wrap around the kitten's head and kind of create a little swaddle for them if they're having trouble eating and you need to like contain their paws so that they can't flail around everywhere. And then these are just cozy to put at the bottom of their tub or wherever you're keeping them. You know, it can be a bathtub, it can be, you know, a box, you know, as long as it doesn't have a lid. And these, you know, they're gonna want something soft to lie on. The next necessary thing is one that can be a DIY, but it is necessary to have some form of this. So this is a blender bottle. This isn't the blender bottle brand. I have one of those, but it was dirty because I used it for my last feeding. So right now I just have this one from Contigo up here. You can see it has a little ball in it. You basically close the lid, hold it tight, and shake up the formula once you put it inside. And that's how you get all the little clumps out of the formula. I've heard you can use like mason jars with lids and like a bouncy ball inside or something. I don't know. I know there's some, but I know you can DIY them. I should have looked up. I thought I knew. I was like, oh, a mason jar one. But you basically need something with a lid and then something inside to shake it up. And I definitely recommend the blender bottles. They make life a lot easier, but if you're on a really tight budget, you can use something you have at home. 
So this is another thing you may have to buy and you can't DIY most of these you have to buy, but by chance you might have some of them. But this is a kitchen scale. I have this one here and it weighs in several different units, whichever one you prefer. I know some rescues do ounces. I personally like grams. And then it, I just have this box on top of it. I already had this box, but if you don't have something like this, you can just order one and get it. But what I basically do is I set this on top of the box on the ground, of course, you know, put it on, tear it for the box, put the kitten in, and that's how you weigh them. This is, did I mention this was a kitchen scale? It's like not just a made for kittens. Hi, Smee boy. You came close to me, so I'm gonna pick you up and show you to the world. Mm -hmm. So the next thing I find that you need is baby shampoo or unscented dish soap. The Dawn dish soap works well. We have that too. I just didn't know where it was. So I just pulled out this and I don't like this brand. It's not cruelty free, but we've had this for a while and I just want to use it up. And that is mainly for butt baths, kittens, especially if they have poop problems, just get messy and sometimes they soil themselves in their blankets and they get covered in filth. And then baby wipes, which I'll mention in a minute, are not enough. So you have to give them booty baths. And that's basically where you just do warm water, get them wet really quickly, put some shampoo on them and just massage until they're clean and then rinse them out really quickly and then quickly dry them into a blanket or towel and and you want to stay with them and make sure they get dry and on a heat source because baby kittens get cold very quickly but it is necessary to give butt baths sometimes so that's why i put that on the list and that's another thing you might have at home or it's pretty cheap to run out and get number nine i don't have with me but it's a tub i'll put a picture of my setup right here and my setup or just another tub about that size there don't put the lid on but it's a great setup to just put some blankets and a heating pad into a tub like this and then the kittens can stay there until they're three weeks old and need an upgrade so number 10 this is the one in my room so it's kind of well it's kind of ripped up because there are kittens in here that like to eat things it's kind of squished too because I squished it but these are tissues obviously my the tissues I used to wipe my kittens bums are in the bathroom but you do need to stimulate baby kittens and so you can I like to stimulate with tissues just grab a few tissues and wipe their bums while they pee and poop so you need those and the next thing are baby wipes kittens soil themselves a lot and sometimes I don't have time or I, I've already given them a ton of butt baths so I can just try and wipe off with baby wipes first I use huggies these are great they come in big packs and they're pretty cheap kittens get little milk mustaches and beards from the formula so I wipe these off with them so their fur doesn't get crusty and dry and then it'll fall out and it's not good so these are definitely a necessity but they're again another cheap necessity the tissues are something you probably have in your home but unless you have babies or foster kittens you might not have baby wipes in your home so those are all the ones I have but then I have some honorable mentions that I really really like and I personally could not not have these I guess the miracle nipples could have fit into this category but these are like it is you can foster without them but it helps the kittens the first one I have on this list is Pedialyte once I use up the Pedialyte that I have I'm probably gonna get a, an electrolyte replacer powder specifically for kittens that you mix up because Pedialyte I've heard it's not so great for kittens so pretend this is electrolyte powder for kittens I just I don't have this but Pedialyte basically for dehydrated kittens this you make the formula with this instead of with water and then the kittens can boost their hydration up a bit so that's one that you definitely want to have on hand if you want to continue fostering that's not super expensive like an incubator just so that your kittens can be hydrated if you get some sick kittens darling you're being loud. So my next thing I have is a toothbrush. Kittens, I like every after every meal except for the nighttime feedings when I'm tired. I just brush them with a toothbrush. Tarling's really playful right now to kind of make it feel like they have their moms licking them clean. And the last thing, I'll put a picture up here since the one I have is in with the other babies. This is a snuggle kitty. It's basically has a heartbeat like you like pull out and turn on and you have to return it on every day. But it basically beats like a heart and the kittens can snuggle up to this stuffed animal and just just like feel like they have a mom again. They're kind of expensive, so they're not 100% necessary, but they're something like if you're planning to foster and you're gonna ask people to give you stuff, a snuggle kitty is a really good thing to ask for. Like I got it for Christmas last year, cause last Christmas I knew I was planning to foster in January, so I asked for a bunch of cat stuff and I got a bunch of my first cat things. So that's pretty much gonna be it for today's video. I really hope this helped you out on the things that are like necessary to foster for bottle babies. Again, subscribe so that you can see the part two of this where I talk about weaned kittens and moms with babies who have slightly different setups and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe for more kitten-related content. I have a Venmo, PayPal, and Amazon wishlist linked in the description below that you can donate to if you would like to help save my kitties. Thank you so much if you do decide to donate, but no pressure whatsoever. Peter, goodness, you're so loud. I upload on Sundays and whenever I want. I try to upload on Sundays and sometimes I upload more than that. I sometimes upload not on Sundays if I can't. So I guess I upload whenever I want to. Also, please leave any thoughts or questions that you have down in the comment section below. Sorry they just moved the 
camera. Darling's really playful right now. Thank you so much for watching again, and goodbye!